If you've been following any hashtag trending product types in audio for video, then you certainly will have noticed the proliferation of 2.4 gigahertz based wireless microphone systems. And sure, these 2.4 gigahertz based systems have a lot going for them. They're compact, easy to use, and they offer plug and play functionality. But are these 2.4 gigahertz based systems the best and only solution that one needs to provide high quality audio for video? What about more traditional UHF wireless systems? So you might be asking, which should I choose? 2.4 gigahertz or UHF? And the answer is yes. <laughs> no, seriously. It really depends on what your goals are and the type of content you create. When we're talking about the waveforms that wireless systems use to operate, we're talking about electromagnetic waves, which are changes in an electromagnetic field. These waves travel at the speed of light and don't require a medium to travel, which is what makes them different from mechanical waves such as sound waves. Waves that reside between 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz on the electromagnetic spectrum are classified as UHF, or ultra high frequency, and these frequencies are regulated in the US by the FCC. UHF wireless microphone systems operate between 470 and 608 megahertz and share that space with other communications such as LAN mobile radio and pagers, as well as UHF TV. 2.4 gigahertz systems operate in a much higher frequency band between 2.4 and 2.483 gigahertz at the top end of the UHF spectrum. And you might recognize that the 2.4 gigahertz band is also used for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth transmission. This can pose a problem in locations with a lot of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth traffic. Either you may not be able to pair the transmitter and receiver, or you may encounter significant dropouts. And as more and more lighting becomes app enabled and video equipment such as follow focuses and monitoring systems become wireless, interference may actually be coming from your own gear on set. While it's still possible to encounter interference with the UHF system, the wider bandwidth and ability to manually scan for an open frequency makes it easier to circumvent any problems. In fact, when we were using our Sennheiser EWDP systems at this year's NAB show, we encountered a block frequency error a couple of times, but it was no big deal. We rescanned and repaired the transmitter and we were up and running again in literally seconds. As a sidebar, the EWDP system features intelligent switching diversity, which compares the signal arriving at both antennas and chooses the cleanest one. When talking about electromagnetic frequencies, it's important to keep in mind that the characteristics of a waveform dictate its limitations. This particularly comes into play when we talk about range and the robustness of a signal transmission. Because of their higher frequency, 2.4 GHz systems have a shorter wavelength than UHF systems. The shorter wavelength lowers their transmission range and makes it easier for them to be refracted off dense materials versus going through those materials. That's the main reason why you'll frequently see the term line of sight qualifying the range of a 2.4 GHz system. On the other hand, because UHF systems operate lower on the frequency spectrum, their wavelengths are longer, which enables them to travel further and penetrate dense objects such as concrete, wood, metal, and the human body. This one's important because if you ever find yourself in situations where you can't maintain line of sight between transmitter and receiver, say you're shooting a wedding and you need to conceal the transmitter on the groom, or you're only able to place the camera away from talent where there's a good chance that line of sight will be broken, a UHF system is gonna be a more reliable option. And while it's true that more and more 2.4 gigahertz systems offer internal recording, and don't get me wrong, redundancy is a good thing, Having to rely on the internal recording because wireless transmission was not optimal adds additional steps to your post workflow, even if you're using a unit that runs timecode. But neither internal recording nor timecode can help if you're live streaming and you encounter connection issues, because in that situation, there is no post. At the end of the day though, choosing between a UHF and a 2.4 gigahertz system all boils down to how you plan on using it. If you're only creating content where you can most likely control the environment, you're probably gonna be fine with a 2.4 gigahertz based system. But if you're shooting a lot out in the field, particularly in environments that can be congested with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth traffic, or you're being hired to shoot weddings or to do corporate work, you really owe it to yourself and to your clients to get a UHF system. After all, one of the worst things you could do is call up a bride and let her know that you need her to VO her vows because your wireless mic was being interrupted by her family live streaming the ceremony. And with that in mind, this has been Andrew from B&H reminding you to always remember audio.